Hey everybody, um, as part of kind of the videos we've been doing on DACMX, just wanted to walk through kind of our first measurement type, which is probably the most common out of all of them. Um, so we're going to walk through how you can use DACMX to measure voltage. Um, we'll, we'll talk about uh, some of the things to do different types of uh, measurements, either with different amounts of channels and whatnot. Um, but yeah, um, probably the most common just because regardless of what you're measuring, um, all sorts of different types of instrumentation use voltage. So whether you're measuring a flow or a pressure, even you know temperatures, all sorts of different things, um, a lot of those transducers will just output a voltage. Um, so it's very, very common to measure voltage. Um, so yeah, let's walk through how you can set up a voltage measurement in LabVIEW. Um, just don't want to necessarily walk through this in this video, but also just want to highlight um, if you go to find go to help in your LabVIEW menu and go to find examples, you can actually go to the DACMX examples and there's a whole bunch of examples on how to read voltage, um, which is a great starting place if you're unsure of what to do, how to use the DACMX API. It's a great starting place. Um, so yeah, um, I do have a, a previous video walking through some of those examples and how to find them as well. So check that out. Um, so yeah, we're going to open up the DACMX uh, palette and grab some of these functions. So when we're measuring voltage, we're going to start with this create channel function. Um, and default goes to analog input voltage. So that's what we're going to be showing in this video. Um, so it's the default one. It's, like I said, the most common thing to be measuring um, just because a whole bunch of these other things, you know, temp temperature, current, you know, strain, force, pressure, torque, frequency, position, acceleration, a whole bunch of those physical phenomenons are often represented by voltage output transducers so um, so yeah we're going to specify our physical channels um, so um, in this I'm just going to use a constant but um, it could be loaded in from a config file um, you could have a control on the front panel it's totally up to you how you're going to do that um, so we're going to start off I'm just going to read from a single channel um, and then we're going to go build off of that. So you can see I can add a name to this uh, channel if I want to. Um, units, which in when I'm working with voltage, um, the units are either voltage or custom from a scale, um, which here is your input for scaling, which I have a previous video on scaling. I don't really want to walk through that in this video, so, but if you want to look at how to use DACMX scales, definitely check that out. Um, the main things you're going to mess with, you know, pretty much always are these top three. Uh, so you have your maximum value and your minimum value. So um, default is five and negative five. So um, you'll definitely want to set these two values that make sense for the device that you are working with. Um, and there are DACMX devices out there that have multiple ADCs built into them. So just one example is the NI9205 C-Series module. Um, it actually has a couple of different ADCs and based off of the values that you pass in here, it's going to pick the best one to use. So if I say 5 and negative 5, well, if that device has a 5 to negative 5 ADC, it's going to pick that one. Now, if your signal went up to 8 volts, for example, um, you're actually going to be just reading the max value that the 5 volt ADC can read, which is slightly above 5 volts. So um, you'll want to set it to something that makes sense um, for your device, and all of the devices out there are different. So this is going to be dependent on your hardware. Um, some only have a single ADC as well, so um, it can only pick one. Um, but yeah, just trying to optimize your measurement based off of what you have. Um, now, there's also this input terminal configuration. So this is very important. This defines how measurements are taken on your DAC device based off of how things are wired in. Um, so there is this default, which is basically going to pick um, so some, and this is all going to vary as well by your card. Um, so you'll want to do some research on the type of C-Series card or DACMX capable device you have to see what wiring configurations it's compatible with. Um, 
And yeah, you can look at uh, even an NI Max, it'll generate wiring for you based off of the type you've specified. Um, but yeah, so default will basically specify whatever the default is for that device. Um, so if it only has one option, one wiring option, you're going to get that one wiring option. If it has multiple, it's going to get you, get you the default. So you have RSE and NRSE. Uh, both of these are variants where basically you're taking your analog input channel and measuring the voltage from that in relation to some ground on your card. So um, you'll have like like a COM pin on your card um, and you're basically saying, hey, AI0 relative to that COM. Um, and that COM will be common across a whole bunch of channels. Um, so yeah, there's cards that only support this. Um, and the one that I use the most, I use a lot of the NI9205s for reading voltage. They support differential, which is basically um, saying the difference in voltage between here and here. So my AI0 may be two separate analog input channels, and I'm just basically doing a voltage differential across those two. Um, so there's different advantages to each of them. There's also pseudo differential, which I've never used, but um, yeah. So you'll want to do do a little research, see what your card supports. Um, your just remember these two are basically um, relative to a common ground, and your differential is um, from basically one analog input to another analog input. So um, you'll want to pick one that makes sense for the card you're working with. So yeah, so now we've defined our channel. Um, next, I'm going to define uh, the timing. So here I'm gonna specify um, the sample mode. So I want to do continuous samples, um, finite samples. This is gonna work pretty much just the same, just uh, yeah. I most often use continuous samples, so that's just what I wanted to show. Um, we do also have this rate, so I can specify the sample rate. Um, so I'm gonna do a thousand hertz, so we're gonna get a sample every one millisecond. Um, and most often you don't need to wire anything into these other uh, options. So. Um, this obviously doesn't work in every case, but most cases you don't need to specify your clock source um, and you don't need to specify the active edge. Um, there are cases where you do need to, but for a lot of applications you don't. So I'm not going to focus on that in this video. Um, so we've defined our timing. Next we are going to start our task. So we'll wire that in. Um, and this is actually going to begin our acquisition. So here we've just been configuring it. Now we're actually going to start. Um, so next I'm going to just create a whoops. Um, oops. Yeah, let's create a while loop. Um, right there. And I'm going to use this DACMX read function. Um, tie that in here. Um, sweet. And um, we'll configure that in just a second. Um, I'm just gonna whoops, wire this guy through. I'm gonna just replace it with a shift register. Sorry, this could use just a little bit of cleanup, but. Okay. Um, and then after my loop, um, well, I'm actually going to create a stop button as well to tell it when to stop. After my loop, though, um, I can use the stop task function to stop my DACMX task. Wire my error through. Um, and I can use this uh, clear task function. Um, alternatively, I also can skip the stop task and just use the clear. The clear will stop and clear. Um, both work just great. Um, yeah, and then I'm just gonna add a little simple error handler there. Um, so yeah, this is basically the structure to use for measuring continuous voltage. Um, now let's define our read. So there's a whole bunch of options. So let's go to analog input. Um, and if you remember, if you look at our create channel, we're only reading one channel right now. So I want to go to single channel. 
Now I have a couple different options. I can either read a single sample, which basically is going to pull one data point from the buffer, um, and I can pick the data type of that, either a waveform or DBL. Um, or I can do multiple samples, where I can pull chunks of data from the buffer. Um, so depending on what you're doing, you'll want to figure out what makes sense. Now, in our case, we're doing continuous samples at 1000 hertz, which means we're going to be getting a data point every one millisecond. Um, if I am pulling data out one sample at a time, this loop therefore has to iterate at um, a thousand times per second, or else that buffer is just going to continue to grow and grow and grow until it eventually overflows. So if you're sampling at a very low frequency, um, you could do one point at a time and that works just great. Um, or if you're doing like hardware times single point on a compact Rio or something, then sure, single point works great. Um, a lot of like Windows based applications with a decent frequency, you're probably going to want to read multiple samples at a time though. Um, so we're going to go to single channel and we're going to go to multiple samples. So we can read a chunk of data at a time instead of one point at a time. Now you can specify here whether you want that as a 1D array of just double floating points or as a waveform. And you can basically get that um, specified by either samples or duration. For this example, I'm just going to do a 1D DBL. Now it added an input here, which is the number of samples per channel. So um, I can specify how many samples I want to read. Um, negative one basically being all of the samples that are available at this time. Now you want to pick a good number here um, because we're going to be using that for a couple of reasons. Um, a, the number that we input here and using this DACMX function is actually going to control the timing of this loop for us. So I don't need to add a wait function. DACMX is going to do that for us. Now there is a timeout field so I can say hey if you haven't gotten this data in this amount of time something's wrong let's move on um, but um, I can specify basically how much data or how long to wait and then how what amount of data so um, you're gonna want to pick a good number here that correlates to the rate at which you're sampling um, now uh, something I, I like to kind of preach as like a general rule um, and this totally is a uh, case by case right um, is uh, I like to read data at a tenth, um, the chunk size to basically be a tenth of my sample rate. So if I am sampling at 1000 hertz, I like to get chunks, uh, 100 samples at a time. And basically that means that this loop is going to be iterating 10 times per second, which is nice for like graphs and stuff. It keeps them very up to date. Um, you know, for maybe like a numeric indicator, it maybe updates a little too fast at 10 hertz, but you can also not update it every iteration, stuff like that. Um, or you could, you know, be averaging that data and using like a notifier or something to update at some frequency. You know, a lot of ways you could do that. Um, but I, I tend to shoot for around 10 times as just like a general rule. Now, obviously based off the application, I vary that. Um, so yeah, case by case for sure. But if you're just like, hey, I have no clue what how many samples at a time I should be reading I usually just say hey do a tenth so this will be iterating 10 times per second um, as long as you don't have some extremely time intensive code in this loop it's gonna be able to keep up just fine um, so yeah um, let's drag down a chart so we can see our data um, and I'm gonna sweet so yeah Let's wire that data right in, and we're ready to go. So we have our acquisition all set up, configures the channel, configures timing, starts it, and then we're going to be reading chunks of 100 samples at a time. DACMX is waiting until that many samples are available before moving on, outputting our data, and then we're shutting it down at the end. So let's run this, and boom, we got our data, just like you'd expect. Um, I can also turn off the uh, auto scale so you can see the data changing. Um, but yeah, so I, I like the, like I said, the 10, a tenth of your sample rate as chunks to read. 
So it makes this graph very responsive, but it doesn't have to be like that, right? I could read um, a thousand samples at a time, which basically means my graph is gonna update once a second. Um, so let's clear that chart and see what that looks like. So yeah, um, that's basically why I like, um, yeah, the 10th rule. I think it, especially for graphs, keeps them very responsive. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, that's your basic workflow for um, uh, measuring voltage. Um, there's obviously variance to that, but this is in typically what you need to do. Now I just want to show before we finish how we can read multiple channels. So let's say um, I want to read maybe three channels. I can just add a colon right here and then specify basically the end number. Um, and now I'm gonna be reading channel AI0, channel AI1, and channel AI2. So that's a really easy way to add multiple channels on a single C-series module or device um, to a task. Now you also can just add another create channel um, here. Uh, and FYI, you can also mix and match you know, measurement types. So it's not like a task can only be voltage or only be temperature. You can mix and match and add all that stuff into a single task. Um, but if you're working on the same device or the same module, this is a very easy way to do that. So the rest of our code is actually all still valid except for our read function. So now we want to be able to read multiple channels. So instead of going to this single channel, we're going to go to multiple channels. Now you still have the option of either single samples or multiple samples. Um, obviously, the one-tenth rule still applies, so we want to use multiple samples. And I'm going to select 2D DBL, but you can also choose waveforms if that is what you want to do. Um, so now we're outputting a 2D array, um, and we can do whatever we want with that, display it on a table, update a graph, etc. cetera. So um, yeah, there you go. And now you get a pretty little rainbow of basically a sine wave. Um, so yeah, that's really all it takes. Um, this base structure is you know, pretty much all you need, and then you can customize it to add custom channels. Um, you can tie in as many as you want, and like I said, different measurement types as well. So that's gonna be the fundamentals of basically how you can measure voltage with DACMX in LabVIEW. Thanks for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.